DJ Mike Zero writes, what's your favorite black and white films? Mine are Mark of Zorro and Good Night and Good Luck. Mm. Schindler's List. I'm going to jump right in there. You said Schindler's List? Yeah. Mm. I'm going to say Ed Wood. Tim Burton's Ed Wood is a fantastic black and white film. Um, now, are you saying black and white films that are As made an now? era or just at the use of the color palette? Right. right. That's a good, that's I a mean, good question. I, obviously, everyone's it's going to be on everyone's list. Citizen Kane. I'd say Double Indemnity. I'd say there's a whole bunch. Casablanca. A, a, a Casablanca. Out of the Past. There's a whole slew of amazing film noirs that I love. Uh, you you want to je- definitely check out if you want to check out like old old school stuff. Metropolis is a really great science fiction film. That's uh, you know one of the first. Laurel and Hardy, March of the Wooden Soldiers. Oh, yeah. One of my favorite Christmas movies of all time. Frankenstein, and more specifically, Bride of Frankenstein. And Young Frankenstein. And Young Frankenstein. Thank you. That is one of my all-time favorite comedies. so good. And it's in black and white, and it's fantastic. I got you all beat. What you got? It's a wonderful life. That's yeah. a good one. Merry yeah. Christmas, Hey, wait everybody. a second. I got I got one up on you. Oh, yeah. Miracle on 34th that's Street. Great my too. gals, mm-hmm. grandpa, That's John right. Payne. Holly's grandfather's yeah. in that, isn't he? All right, what's next? Awesome Sauce writes, what's an underrated comedy that you guys love? Mine is Multiplicity with Michael Keaton. Mm. Oh, I like Multiplicity. Yeah, yeah. that's a nice one. Um, the one I go, look, there, if I really had a chance to sit down and think about it, so... Whenever you ask these questions, hey, what are your favorite this? Or what's your top? Yeah. You got to understand that we might give a different answer if we had time to sit down and right. think about it. But a comedy to me that almost nobody else liked and always writes off and almost nobody saw it, but I laugh my ass off on it, is the Gerard Butler comedy, uh, The Ugly Truth. It's with uh, it's with uh, Catherine Heigl. With Catherine Heigl in it, who is, I've never liked Catherine Heigl more than in that movie. That movie from start to finish had me laughing and chuckling and giggling all the way through. It is funnier than, I I, than it. it should have been, for sure. It is much funnier than it yeah. should have been, yeah. Two for me, I mean, I know that people like them, but I still think they're underrated among the public in general, and one is definitely Mallrats. Um, oh, I definitely. Love I, it's just it's just such a like when when you talk about really great comedies, it's hysterical. But Hot Shots, the first Hot Shots for Lloyd Bridges' performance alone, what I wouldn't be to be twenty years younger and a woman. Like he's <laughs> so good. Lloyd Bridges is the best. He just nails lines. It is one of the best comedic performances of all time. Lloyd Bridges is so good in that movie. For him alone, you should go and watch it. All right, one of my underappreciated comedies that is underrated. Bowfinger with Steve Martin oh, and Eddie Bowfinger. Murphy. When it came out, it just kind of missed. It didn't hit the radar. It. I watch it once a year. It is. It is hilarious. It's all about Hollywood. It's fantastic. It's one of Eddie Murphy's greatest performances. Check it out. Bowfinger. Remember this Steve moment. Martin. We won't say the punchline is. You said that's what this moment is. My favorite moment of the movie. We are going to go get the finest crew that money can buy. And then what happens next? Yes. One of the funniest oh moments in movies ever. And so true. And, and I always say, keep it together, keep it together, keep it together, keep it together. Keep it together, keep it together. Keep it together. <laughs> so another thing. All right, what's next? Conrad Kedzio writes, behind the scenes question, who made the music for all of your different shows? Um, well, some of the music was, we brought over from our AMC days. And uh, a lot, all that music, like Jedi Council, Hero, stuff like that, we actually uh, had uh, musicians, uh, uh, that we, what's the word uh, that I'm looking for? Commissioned, oh, yeah. that we commissioned to actually compose uh, that music for the show. So a lot of it was composed for us. Um, then one or two pieces that we use for background tracks here and there, we just purchase that music and, and use it. But um, yeah, for like Heroes, Jedi Council, and for Movie Talk, we actually commissioned somebody to compose the music and do it for us. I guess anyone from AMC who's watching this, who is, who's uh, who's around and watching this and knows the person, you might want to jump in and credit them on the on the YouTube comments board. Like say, hey, if you want to, because we don't know actually their names. Who that, composed yeah, it, right? Who the actual composers are. So if you want to give them some uh, shout out, throw it on the comment board. I love right. the behind the scenes questions. I, I yeah. love behind the scenes questions. All right, what's next? Anthony Rodriguez writes, what actor was completely miscast in a movie? Um, many of them have been. The, the one I usually fall back to is uh, Spider-Man, the original Spider-Man. Tobey with, Maguire? Uh, with, with, with not, not Tobey Maguire oh. himself, but uh, Mary Jane. Oh, uh, Kirsten Dunst. Kirsten Dunst. Yeah. Yeah, like who I'm a fan of. I think she's a, a very talented actress. Like her very much. It was just the wrong casting. It was just the wrong casting. Not just to take a shot at him, but just in general, um, there's no way Jai Courtney should have played Reese in uh, Terminary. He just he just doesn't have the same charisma that Michael Bean had. I thought it, it was a, that was bad casting. Yeah, I'm gonna have to think about it. I'll I'll get it in a minute. All right, so. what's next? I uh, wasn't ready. Okay, <laughs> Wait, I, Butchie Smalls writes: Which sportsman do you think deserves a movie about their life? Oh gosh. Um, 
there are, I mean, there are so many, like the reason that sports stories can make great movies is because they are real life dramatic rags to riches stories. Uh, where usually you have somebody who had to persevere and like give everything they had and blah to get to where they went. Guy Lafleur would be a great one. Um, I like to see Frank Mir got a story. Frank Mir had a very interesting story, but yeah. in MMA they did one not too long ago about the one, uh, the the one guy that John Bones Jones. Yeah, Matt, lost to. Yeah, it was uh, uh, not Matt Brown. Matt uh, Hammer. Hamill. Hammer. Yeah, it, the, and his nickname was the Hammer. And they did a movie about him yeah. um, a couple of years ago. Nobody really paid attention to it. Um, so I would usually default back to a hockey player, probably. Yeah, the reason why I think that those movies, though, like Frank Mir as well, I think that with a bigger budget, as because you look at something like Warrior, and I think that if, if the UFC got behind it, you look at Frank Mir's story of what he did, how young he was to his heavyweight, the, what he went through with the motorcycle the trial accident, and tribulation, and, and, and then yeah. coming back and winning and beating the indestructible Brock Lesnar at the time. I mean, there's something pretty you special. You know, I'd say I'd like to see the, the story of Kareem Abdul Jabbar and Larry Bird. Mm. Because that was like Larry a really Bird, yeah, cool. Story. Uh, they always uh, like playing this like confrontation back and forth. No, it was Magic also, Johnson and Larry Bird. Oh, was it Magic Johnson? Yeah, Magic Johnson. And yeah. Larry okay. Bird. A movie. There was a, an ESPN. I believe it was a thirty for thirty. It might not have been a thirty for thirty, but ESPN did this like the little documentary, just on Magic and Larry, who saved the NBA. Right. The two of them yeah. saved the NBA. So I got it wrong. And their with relationship. Kareem, it's aw they have an awesome, or, awesome story. Well, then you jumping into basketball. I mean, Michael Jordan's got to get a movie eventually, right? Probably. Yeah. And also, I'd love to see a biopic about the Harlem. Globetrotters because I saw them when I was a little kid yeah. and I thought that was like a lot of fun. I mean, I remember just really digging it and how that all came about. You know, Hayden Christensen is who I'd say was a miscast. 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 Yeah. So. All right, what's next? Alex Levitt writes, which actor do you want to see break out in 2016? Uh, yeah, that's tough. I, I'd, I'd have to see them break out to want them to be successful. So yeah, I just I, want to see the movies that are coming out and then out of those. Yeah, ask, movies, ask us yeah. that later. Yeah. yeah. All right, what's next? All right, Wynn writes, come Oscar, how do you see the best supporting actor category and does Hardy still have a chance to get nom and who will get snub? I think Hardy's got a chance to get nominated. I, I do think he has yeah. a chance for to Revenant, get nominated. For Revenant though, not, yeah. not Mad Max. No, no, I agree. Yeah, yeah, I think he's got a chance to get nominated for Revenant. Um, and I think, I hate saying it, but I, I, I really do think uh, Sylvester Stallone is going to get snubbed. No, really? I, no, I think he's getting nominated. I, I hope would, so. I, I hope you're right. I hope you're right. Yeah. I don't think Hardy's going to be nominated for Revenant. Okay. So. All right. What's next? The X Files writes: Whatever happened to the Where the Mi Where the Miller sequel? That's a good question. If you guys want to tackle it while I look that up, I, th yeah. I believe it's still in the on the plans. I certainly hope they're they've already shot it and it's being edited right now. Right? There's guys? a window though. It, yeah. There's no, a window. I, there is a window. That, that's why I'm saying yeah. I want it already to be in the can and it's coming out next summer because I really enjoyed Where the Millers. Yeah. I thought it was, I, it, a lot it was of another fun. one of those. Like John was mentioning with that Gerard Butler movie, it was a movie that I was like, ah, this is just going to be one of those comedies. I'm going to leave. Going why did they right? make that? And it wasn't. It was a lot of fun. And I think that it it showed. What Sudeikis could do as a leading in a leading role. That was vacation, the real vacation. That was that a much have, they better have version. Called that vacation, and then I would be I like, Man, I love vacation. More. That was such a better yeah. version of that what was they, vacation, yes. the new version. You know, I don't think it was shot. No, no, I don't they gave think up it was. On it? I don't know that they've given up on it. It's still, it's still listed as in per, as um, uh, as as on the books, but I do not believe hmm. it has been shot. Yeah, I mean, it could be wrong. If you know anything different, let us know. Just but change right. the title. We're still the Millers. We're still. Right. That's yeah. not a bad title. Yeah. All right, let's take two more. All right, Hannibal Gaming writes: Who is the better actor in your opinion, Andrew Garfield or Tobey Maguire? Not including the Spidey films. Uh, Andrew Garfield, and that's no disrespect to Tobey Maguire. I think he's a exceptional actor as well. I just think and Andrew Garfield, he is. He's a special talent. I really, I really do think that. Um, like he, to me, he single-handedly, not save as if the movie was in trouble, but the Social Network. Mm -hmm. That movie has no pulse. That movie has no humanity. If it wasn't for what Andrew Garfield brought to that film, in, in my opinion, I thought he did great as Spider-Man. I'm looking forward to a lot of a couple of films he's got coming out this year as well. So, and and I, it, Tobey Maguire is a great actor. I really, really like Tobey Maguire. So no disrespect to him whatsoever. I just think if I had to pick one, I would pick Andy Garfield. I think they're both uh, really talented, but I also agree with you. I think Garfield as well. Although I thought Tobey Maguire, the Champagne Sacrifice, I thought was really great. good. He was um, really good in that. But he seems to play a lot of the same type of roles. I think Garfield's going to have a little bit more range throughout his career because I also thought Garfield was great in 99 Homes. Mm -hmm. um, so I think Garfield has a little bit more to him in a little more tools. I, I'm going to go with Tobey Maguire. I loved him in Cider House Rules. I also loved him as Peter Parker in all three movies, even the third one. 
I think uh, Andrew Garfield's a great actor. And a lot of the films that I've seen him in, he's incredible in Social Network. Um, the futuristic one where it's like, you know, all the kids, you're, you're born as a kid and they're going to take your... Oh, right. I can't remember what, what the that hell was. was that it's just right. Right. Yeah, yeah, I remember what you're talking about, yeah. That he was amazing in. I didn't like him in The Amazing Spider-Man. I thought the first one was he was he was okay in, he was good, and then the second one was just like, eh, whatever. Yeah. So, I mean, Tobey Maguire to me was Peter Parker and then he became Spider-Man. The Amazing Spider-Man never really bought him. As Spider Man, I mean, I'm glad he was okay. I thought he was good in the Amazing Spider. You've seen 99 Homes though. Check that out. Oh yeah, no, I'm chance. saying he's a great actor, yeah. but we're talking about who I thought the better Spider Man oh. was. Tobey Maguire. Oh, I didn't know that. What's is that what the question? Well, no, no, the question: Who's the better actor? If if you're if, oh. if you were to ask me who is the better Spider Man actor, it would to me the answer depends on <clears throat> what Spider Man are you looking for. Because Tobey Maguire, to me, and this is really more the the uh, the direction of the director more than the actor. Uh, Toby was a great 1960s Spider-Man. Yeah. I mean, he was a gr he was perfect actually. He was nothing short of perfect. Now, now though, if you're going to say we're making a Spider-Man movie and we want it to be what Peter Parker was in a social standing kind of way in the 60s, but what does that look like in a modern context? Mm -hmm. Then I thought Andrew Garfield's Sp uh, Peter Parker was a perfect translation of what that would look like modernly. So it's really. Who is the better Spider-Man? It depends on what Spider-Man you're looking for, I guess, to me. Yeah. All right, last question of the day. Michael Gouljar writes, what are your thoughts on if The Force Awakens can beat Harry Potter's midnight opening record? Yep. Yeah. It's more theater. It's going to be more theaters, too. 4,100 theaters. Yeah. yeah. No, it's yeah. going to it's, it's gonna completely, yeah. it's going to obliterate it. It's not going to, it's not going to beat it. It's going to obliterate yeah. it. Yeah, so. I'll smash you like a bug. That's Lucas. Do your Lucas I mean, voice. It all, it all depends I'll on, smash you like on, a bug. Yeah. on the semantics of it. But what do we mean by midnight screenings? Like, do you mean midnight screenings as in like the official, the official opening day is tomorrow, but it's opening in every theater tonight. So are you saying the specific 12 a.m. screenings or are you also talking about the 9 p.m., the 10 p.m.? Because Harry Potter got that too. So it would really depend on the semantics. Of it. Let's just put it this way. It's opening day sales. Star Wars The Force Awakens will obliterate the Harry Potter. I like the delivery, the Steve Martin delivery, the 12 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Hey, guys, if you like this clip, click here to watch the entire episode. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because it'll help you stay up to date with all the stuff we've got going on here at Collider.